second epistle of John, <clears throat> the elder unto the elect lady and her children, whom I love in the truth, and not I only, but also all they that have known the truth. We got that verse down. For the truth's sake which dwelleth in us, and shall be with us forever. Now we pick up the last part of this verse. Shall be with us forever. Going to be no reviews. Expect you to go back and get the previous audios and videos, which you can find on my website, uh, on my YouTube, and Sermon Net. Forever is 390 times in the Bible. 329 verses of the Old Testament and 51 verses of the New Testament. When I grew up, lovers would write forever. You know, true love forever. To, to stress the love that they had for each other. But what is forever? We studied last night on, uh, the Psalms. And we close with forever. There are perishable items like milk, eggs, and other dairy products that have an expiration date. Well, with an expiration date, that's not forever. And after that date, it's no longer any good. If you got milk in your refrigerator and it's a month old, I advise you not even to open it. Or with an expiration date, it will be soon of no value. So even though you have something that's good, if there's a date on it, it will come to that date when there's no more value. Or it already has passed the value and is worth nothing. It would be nice to purchase items from a store that would last forever. Again, what does forever mean? The book of Psalms has the most usage for forever. 125 verses. Then 1 Chronicles is second at 19 verses. The only New Testament book that makes the top 10 is the book of Revelation at 13 verses. In the New Testament, forever is found in 51 verses. So in our hymn book of the Bible called Psalms, we find the word forever the most. Now in the first place in the New Testament, Matthew 6.13, I mean, we're not going to look at all these. You can get a concordance, electronic computer, and look it up. It probably is an interesting study. I did not do it all for us. But in Matthew 6.13 we read, and this is not the Lord's Prayer. This is the disciple prayer. Matthew 6.13, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. What is forever? It is God's kingdom. It is God's power. And it's God's glory. Have you ever pondered the fact that anything that's 100% man-made will not last forever? Cannot last forever. Man-made. From the creation of man, Adam, to the last man that will ever be left. Archaeologists will dig up the ruins of man. But how long is their job secured? How long does archaeology have? 
There's coming a time when it's all going to be gone. But we have a forever. And those who are parents out there who have children in your house, you know when you go to the store and buy something, you know it don't last forever. It would be nice. So my family and I, we visited the first graveyard of the settlers of Groton, Connecticut. Researching Baptist history. And in Norwich. And in Norwich, there we stood. And there were no gravestones. We looked around. This was the graveyard. Outside of a recently put monument of stone, we looked and looked and questioned. Where are they buried? Important names in if Norwich, Connecticut, important names of Baptist history. And doing an examination, the conclusion was, not that we were at the wrong site, it was the right site. The graves were made of wood. And what they thought would last, I guess, forever, did not. And in 2012, they were all gone. All ID, all noted dates of birth and death, and anything written on those wood was gone. We visited another graveyard in Norwich, Connecticut, that of the mother of ben uh, Benedict Arnold and other great Baptist history and and those who persecuted the Baptists, the separatists as they called them, and graves that were in stone. Some of them you couldn't read any longer. In stone. Some were so valuable that moss has grown over it and you can't clean the moss because you would destroy the stone. And with weather and rain and wind, the stone, the edges, were soon if very unlegible to read or bare. So when you think about death and monuments and getting that grave marker, it's not forever. And there are some people who put great money and great things into gravestones. And they don't last. Nothing lasts. You know, if you were to find the, the, the grave where, where Adam and Eve are, and if you could dig it up, what would you find? Dust. 6,000 years. I don't even know if there would be any bones. 2 Peter 3, 10-12. 2 Peter 3, 10-12. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. That's not the rapture of the church. There's a movie out there. The thief of the night. It's not about the rapture. It's about the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's get it right, people. In the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. There's your nuclear blast. From God. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Global warming in its extinct. <laughs> there is a global warming period coming, my friend, when God dissolves this entire earth with kaboom. There's a great flames, great burning. The Big Bang is yet to happen. Great noise, there's the Big Bang. 
Satan wants you to believe it came from the Big Bang. No, it ends with the Big Bang. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. What things? Everything. What manner of persons ought to be, excuse me, manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for the, and the hasting unto the coming of the day of the Lord, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. 2 Peter 3, 10 through 12. What is the future of the earth? Is it forever? It will be vaporized. Man's nuclear war will not destroy all. God will. Now it's funny. If you were to go to Groton, Connecticut, in my grandma's backyard, there's a tree there that has my mom's initials and my dad's initials and a heart. True love. And that was at their level. Now it's way up in the sky. But that's not going to be forever. That's all going to burn up. Now notice Peter says elements. As of October 2006, there are 117 known elements and they're all going to burn up. And Peter says that they will melt with a fervent heat. God, for the Bible says, for our Lord, for the Lord our, thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. Deuteronomy 4.24. Man has changed this world into, into sin. And the worshiping of not God, of apes, and, and idolatry, and paganism, and gods, and religion, and everything but God. God, the consuming fire in Deuteronomy 4.24, is going to get rid of all this junk. Do you know what this planet is filled with? It's filled with poop. Sewage. Garbage. Waste. Chemicals. Man is destroying this earth, and the only way God can do it is to burn it all up and give us a new heavens and a new earth. Now, what are some elements? What are they? An element is a substance that is made entirely from one type of atom, A T O M. For example, the element hydrogen is made from atoms containing a single proton. And a single electron. If you change the number of protons an atom has, you change the type of element it is. So the atom, protons, and electrons declare what that element is. If you had very, very good eyes and could look at the atoms in a sample of hydrogen, you would notice that most of the hydrogen atoms would be would have no neutrons. Some of them would have one neutron, and a few of them would have two neutrons. It's all scientific stuff. These different versions of hydrogen are called isotopes. All isotopes of particle element have the same number of protons, but have a different number of neutrons. If you change the number of neutrons an atom has, you make an isotope of that element. This fact that I got for you, I don't completely understand. I don't know it all. Again, as of October 16, 2006, scientists know of 117 different elements. Some like gold, silver, copper, and carbon. Those are going to burn up, melt up, go bye-bye. Have been known for thousands of years. And if you get this book, if you print it out, there's some names here. I don't even want to get into what they say. But these three, what they mentioned here, have only recently been created by scientists. So there are elements out there that have been created by man. 
and they're going to mill. Isn't that interesting? All known elements are arranged on a chart called the periodic table of elements. We've all seen that in school and probably had to memorize that thing. And this is from the Thomas Jefferson National Accelerator Facility, Office of Science Education. And I give you on this the, the link if you want to go there. Okay. All that man has had to work came with came from God. Your house, if it's of wood or stone, came from God. Because God made the trees, God made the stone. God made the dirt. God made the, the dust, whatever they make cement from. Everything's foundation on this planet is of God. Everything. There is not nothing around us, above us, that we walk on, that we swim through, or whatever we have, is not sourced from God. You know, you put a label on it, made in the USA. No, made by God. The raw materials is what I'm talking about. God the Creator will disband it all by fervent heat. So anything that you see, touch, smell, hear, or taste will be gone. The earth and its goods are not forever. So how can you expect to get something forever from a store when when that, that store and everything else is not forever? There are people who think they can take their gold, their silver, and, and copper, and carbon, and their metal, and put it in the grave with them. You can't. Ask any of the pharaohs in Egypt. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea, Revelation 21, 21, 1. There is coming a day when there will be no more of this. Everything that you work for, everything you set your heart on in this earth will be gone. All that is for Christ will last. And in verse 5 of Revelation 21, And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. God will remake it all over again. This earth since Genesis 3 has been under a curse. There is a line of men from Cana, which was Ham's son that are cursed. But man puts great value. Man puts great value on land today and the land won't be around forever. What is the forever that John is talking about in Revelation? In Matthew, we read it was God's kingdom, his glory, and his power are forever. When all trees, metal, plastic, and styrofoam are all gone, God will be still present. God is forever. And he always will be and is forever. Well, that's interesting. If you want to find something that is forever, you got to look to God. God is eternal. Your soul is forever. Just because they just because you die and they put you in the ground doesn't mean that's it. Now, in Matthew 21, verse 19, Jesus curses a tree, a fig tree. When men say we are to love and save a tree, Jesus curses one. And how long did he curse it? 
forever. Which means that tree would never grow any more fruit or figs forever. It is recorded that the tree actually withered away in verse 20. Forever here is an earthly lifetime and will never grow or produce fruit for a long time. Yeah, a long, long time. And miracle grow will not even help. Never again. That's forever. That tree never will produce fruit. That's forever. Luke one thirty three. Talking about Jesus Christ, we read that on the throne of David, he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. Here it is constant, continuous forever. Not only is God's kingdom forever, but so is the reign of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Some of you are going to be very happy. President Obama won't be the president in eternity. Neither will Ronald Reagan or George Washington or Queen Elizabeth or Putin or any other of the world leaders. It will be forever the Lord Jesus Christ. This goes to show you that God and his son are one. But unto the son he saith, Thy throne, O God, talking to Jesus, is forever and ever. And the scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom, Hebrews 1.8. And an extra ever is added. Forever proves that the Father and the Son are always one. Always. And their throne, which we saw in Matthew, God's kingdom. God's power is forever. John 6, 51 and verse 58. Jesus who will reign forever, God and Jesus who live forever, they offer you mortals something. I'm going to die. I'm a mortal. Life. Even though all the way of the earth and the universe will end, man and his soul will not. You are not an element. Yes, God made you from dirt, Genesis chapter 2. But he breathed into you and you became a living soul. Animals don't have that capability. When they die, they go back to the dirt and that's it. Animals don't have souls. All dogs do not go to heaven. So there is in a man something that lives forever, and that's his soul. The soul of a man is forever. If man's soul did not live, why would Jesus say life? Why would it say, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish? The elements are going to perish, but shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. There must be something in you, person, that's forever. Now, there are two places of condition forever for a soul. Number one is life, Jesus Christ, and glory. Number two is death, Satan, and the lake of fire, Revelation 20. Plain and simple. You are not an element. Your body is. You know, when you, when you get a bottle of, uh, of um, I'm trying to think, vitamins. Well, in that vitamins, there's iron, zinc, magnesium. Those are all elements. But your soul is not. 
Luke 16. The rich man also died and was buried in verse 22. It don't stop there. In hell he lifted up his eyes, verse 23. And cooled my tongue, verse 24. In hell man retains his eyes, his tongue, and his mouth, etc. And death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire, Revelation 20, verse 14 and 15. Unlike the earth, you do not get disappeared. You don't dissolve into nothing. Look at the, the laws of thermodynamics. What lives forever? God, Jesus Christ, man's soul, Satan, angels. What is forever? Glory with God or the lake of fire with the devil and his angels, Matthew 25, 41. That's going to be the eternal state. And you have that choice today to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved or be lovers of darkness. If you go back to the last study we did through the second epistle of John, we talked about the, the comfort of the Holy Spirit abides in us. Now we go to, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, John 14, 16. Now we picked up where we left off last time. To the Christian, when the Holy Spirit comes to indwell, remember that last time? He stays. He never leaves. That Holy Spirit that indwells in you, is like God, is God, is like Jesus, is Jesus. And they are forever. Can I lose it? What? How do you lose forever? Where do you go looking for forever? Jesus says, I will never leave thee. And when you put that to the contents we're studying now with the comfort of the Holy Spirit, that is a mouthful. And how every day shall not we, we quote that verse, I will never leave thee. But have you ever chewed on the meat of that verse? That I will never leave thee is forever bubblegum that you'll never have to get rid of. You just keep chewing and chewing and chewing. And enjoying, enjoying, enjoying. So not only is God in Jesus Christ forever, but so is the Holy Spirit. And remember we talked about, go back to last week and bring last week's message into today. How the Holy Spirit, God and Jesus indwells in me and I indwell with them. Now you bring it one more step up forever. You can never get rid of it. The Trinity that lives in us and we in them, that unity is forever. And my friend, if you question your salvation, the security of it, I'm going to question that maybe you don't have it. Now, I've gone through a study. And you can find it on our webpage. You can find it on my YouTube. You can find it on, on the sermon net. All about the eternal security of the believer. I take you from salvation all the way through to what do I do when I sin after I'm saved. Now. Who changed the truth of God into a lie. And worship and serve the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. 
Amen. Romans 1.25. Evolution is not forever. But the creator is. Even though man turns God into gods, small g-o-d-s, in his rebellion against God, God will forever be blessed. An atheist or an agnostic does not ruin God's day. The public school system can say whatever they want about where we come from. While I say that God, the creator that made me forever is blessed, is happy. Is your instructor of evolution forever happy? But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down in the right hand of God. Hebrews 10, 12. How long is the atonement of Jesus Christ's blood? Forever. If Christ's atonement was not forever... Read that verse again. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. If it wasn't forever, as soon as you died, your soul would be condemned to hell. You know what will keep you in New Jerusalem as a saved, born-again Christian? The blood of Christ. Forever to be marked in his hands, in his feet, in his side, to show you his love. Christian, your very soul depends on the foreverness of Jesus' one sacrifice. And it's not the Mass. The Mass is devilish, it's satanic. Even if you put Christ in front of it. Go on. Being born again, not of a corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. 1 Peter 1.23 But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you, 1 Peter 1.25 Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Matthew 25.35 Mark 13.31 And Luke 21.31 Now in this study, you go back, we've already seen that Jesus Christ is the word, and the word is Jesus Christ. So if God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit lives forever, so will the word. And some of you out there are not reading the Word because you don't have the King James Bible. Everything else, yes, I'm a King James only. And I mean that in the English language. I know you can take the King James Bible and put it into Spanish. I know you can put it into Polish. I know you can put it into Italian and all the other languages. But as far as the English Bible, it is the King James and not the, 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 the abbreviations, not the Bibles that have copyrights. God don't copyright his work so we can use it and get it out. Imagine God, we get to heaven and say, Lord, what are you, what are you, what are you judging me about now? I'm going to judge you because you used my word. Yeah, but Lord, I used it to get people saved. Yeah, but I had a copyright, and so you you would finish the copyright, so you got no, that's not how it works. You know if you quote from the modern Bibles, the quote in those Bibles, you are you are taking a piece of work that has copyright and you are in violation of the law if you don't get their permission. You are stealing. Can you imagine standing before the judgment seat of Christ using a Bible that's not God's word and God charging you with theft because you didn't get the copyright permission? 
Imagine every preacher that does not use the King James Bible get up in his pulpit using the, the, these abbreviated Bibles. I'm not going to give you the names because it's not even worth putting on my tongue. Imagine God are charging them with thief because they didn't get permission to use the, the, the permission for the word. If you don't get permission to use it, you're a violation of the law. But that's just something the Lord showed me right now. That's something new. So, let's go on. At what time the libraries of the earth? How many libraries are out there? Of all centuries are long gone. They speak about the Alexandrian library there. And it's gone. What about the, the king in, in uh, uh, Hosea? No, excuse me, Esther. The king couldn't sleep one night, so he calls his man. He says, "Come in. You want to give me the most boring rules and laws and and the chronicles, please, and read them to me so I can go to sleep." They're gone. What about all the things that Abraham Lincoln wrote as a child as he was homeschooled? Going. What about all the drawings that you did for your, your mom and your dad? All those cards that you made on, on Father's Day and Mother Day. They might be gone. <clears throat> if they're not, give 10, 15, 20 years after your parents die and They'll probably be gone. What about a love letter that Adam wrote to Eve? You saying there was no communication? It's gone. When all what man has written, all his stories, his history, the novels, the li the literature, the the science fiction, the fiction, the nonfiction, all that he wrote will burn up in the future. There is coming a day when everything's going to be melted, burnt, gone. But the sure word of God will always live and will always be. The word of God will be forever. What matters to God in forever is the book's subject. And the subject of the book is his son. Jesus Christ, his people Israel, his church, born-again Christians, the book, which has not been tarnished by man. The King James 1611 AV Bible will be forever. Forever means God, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, the word in your soul. That is forever. As we pick up and finish another verse, you need to realize the for foreverness of your soul. That forever you'll be in eternity with God or eternity with Satan. Forever is non stop. Forget forever never ends. Forever is God. God has no beginning. And God has no end. You will get out of hell when God dies. And I'm sorry to tell you, God will never die. That's forever.
gonna make a joyful noise. The world will hear my voice, Jesus saves. The world still tells us daily that God is not alive, and salvation's plan is just a fairy tale. But their lies don't change the truth.